Hello, my DIY loving friends. It's Sarah from Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. Today, we're diving into a world where magic doesn't just exist in fairy tales, but right here in your home. We're using some hard to find Dollar Tree wood drawers and some PVC elbows from like Home Depot because why not? We're going to sprinkle a little bit of DIY decor magic everywhere. From simple to spectacular, these DIY projects are for everyone. So what are you waiting for? Let's go create some magic and DIY together. For this DIY, I'm starting with four of these wooden drawers from Dollar Tree. They have cutouts in the front, but we will be turning the drawers around so you can't see them. Then I'm taking all the drawers out and placing the four drawer bases in a two by two grid. I've got these balsa wood square dowels from Amazon. I will link them for you in the description box below and I am placing them in the grid between all four boxes as you see me doing right here. I'm going to mark with a pencil where I need to cut each of my dowels so that they will fit perfectly into the grid. I'm using my miter shears to cut them which I will also link for you below. Once I've marked all of the grid, the inner grid dowels that are inside, then I do the same thing for the outer frame of that grid, marking and cutting a dowel to fit in a frame that goes around the four boxes and the little cross grid inside, you know, in between the boxes. You can see the grid that I made when I remove the boxes and then off camera, I repeat that a second time. So I'm gonna end up with two of the exact same grids as you see right here. I need to attach the first of the grid pieces to the back of my drawer bases and I'm going to attach the grids in the back of all the four boxes and then I'm going to do that in the front of the four boxes. I'm using super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree to attach all of those dowels to the drawer bases as you're watching me do right here starting with the back. I'm attaching the back grid pieces between the two boxes first and then that longer back piece of dowel is going to attach the top two boxes to the bottom two boxes. Then I attach each of the two side frame pieces on either side of the four box set, followed by that top frame piece across the top, and then lastly that bottom frame piece across the bottom. And hopefully watching this, this is all making sense to you. Once my four box little cabin is dry, I stand it up and it is time to attach all those same size dowel pieces to the front of the boxes, the exact same way that we did to the back. And this way, we're going to end up with a completely framed in cabinet. I did realize at that point that I would need two short pieces of dowel to fit between the front and the back frame just on the bottom of my cabinet. So I marked where to cut with a pencil and cut two small dowels and I glue them between the front and the back frame of the bottom of the cabinet, as you see right here. Next, using some wood planks from Dollar Tree, I use two planks for both sides of the cabinet and also a plank plus a little piece, a piece of another plank to fit across the top of that cabinet because it wasn't long enough to go all the way across the top. I start by gluing one plank onto the first side of the cabinet and I am gluing that plank so that it's flush with the top of the cabinet and it reaches down to where we placed that little piece of dowel a minute ago at the bottom of that cabinet frame. And then I glue the second plank onto the other side of the cabinet the exact same way, flush with the top and reaching down to the small dowel between the bottom frames. And just a note here, I used a little bit of wood filler in the space between my top plank and that little piece of top plank. Next, I wanted to make a simple base for my cabinet. I have these large wood blocks, I'll link below, but I realized that the wood blocks on the Dollar Tree palettes are very similar to those blocks, just a little longer and thinner. So you can use those for this if you want to. I attach two tumbling tower blocks to my two large wood blocks and in rectangle shape as my cabinet base. Turning my attention to the cabinet drawers, I've turned them all around so the cutouts are facing inside the drawer and I've got four wood rings like the kind they have at Dollar Tree. Using some wood glue, I attach one wood ring to the center of each of my four drawers, just eyeballing the placement of each ring in the center. Next, I have these large wood half rounds from Amazon and I'll link them below. I use wood glue to attach the four half rounds inside the center of each of my four wood rings. 
With all the glue and all my wood pieces dry, I make a mixture of folk art, white chalk paint, and water, and I am using that mixture to paint all the wood pieces of my cabinet, rubbing the excess paint off with a dry paper towel to achieve a nice whitewash kind of effect. There is still a little bit of wood grain that comes through the white. All the pieces are going to be painted this exact same way. Once my chalk paint dries, I grab some folk art antique wax and a small brush and I use the wax to distress paint all the little details around the wood ring and the wood half round on all of my drawers. And once I finish with the drawers, I'm going to use a larger chip brush to distress paint the entire cabinet on all of the edges especially, but also on the front, on the top, and also on the sides to give the whole piece more depth and dimension. I also um, use the same kind of technique to distress paint the base for the whole cabinet. And lastly, I use some wood glue to attach the rectangular base to the bottom of the cabinet. And this is my quaint and charming little white cabinet. Is it shabby chic or cottage core? I don't know, but I really like it. And I think it's perfect in any room of your home as well as perfectly functional to hold trinkets or knickknacks or anything really. A serious glow up for a Dollar Tree wood drawer. This next DIY, well, this is what happens when you leave me alone in Home Depot. I buy PVC elbows and apparently you guys have to suffer. What can I say? I'm just kidding. Starting with four PVC 90 degree elbows. I position them the way that I want them to stand and I'm using this Starbond super glue along with the spray accelerator, which I will link for you below. I needed them to stick together with an immediate hold at kind of an awkward angle. And the Starbond really did the trick for this, keeping them in place exactly where I wanted them. I also had this group of six elbows. I already glued two together standing up. So I used the star bond to attach the other four the same way. And once all six are attached in groups of two, I then take the star bond and attach the three sets of two together in a row, like you see me doing right here. And when you see that 91% alcohol out, you know we're doing faux wood graining with alcohol inks. I will link all the supplies for you in the description box below, but I wet my makeup brush and I saturate it with some alcohol ink in the color latte. And starting with one of the six elbows, I begin layering on the color. And the thing with alcohol ink is that you add more and more to layer the color on and the brush strokes start to resemble wood grain all on their own. And so far I've only used that latte color on this, but I decided that seam in the middle was giving me a bamboo stalk kind of vibe. So I grabbed a darker color, the teakwood alcohol ink, and I add that teakwood color to the seam, alternating that with the larger brush to move the color and feather it out a bit until I achieve that look that I am going for, that two-tone kind of a bamboo stalk look. I paint the other four elbows the same way and I turn them over to fill in some color on the bottom side too. And then I decided to do the bamboo darker effect on the edges of the six elbows as well until that whole piece is covered. I have this bamboo cutting board from Dollar Tree and first I paint the top and the sides with some antique wax that's been mixed with water until it's fully covered. Then using a tiny paintbrush, I am using antique wax without any water and I paint little lines across the cutting board to make a really multicolor, darker wood look. The wax will rub into the bamboo with that little brush if you really push the wax into it. Meanwhile, back with the four elbow base that we made earlier, I grabbed this small wood round, like the kind you can get at Dollar Tree, but I will link it below as well. I am going to paint the entire wood round with some April Barrel white paint, and I'm making sure to fully cover all of those edges too. Then I'm going to let that base coat of white dry. Meanwhile, I have some more white paint along with dark gray, light gray, and black, and all of which I will link for you below. I also have some pieces of a damp sponge cut up and ready to go. I start with putting a generous coat of white paint going in one direction on my wood round, and without letting that paint dry, I come in with a brush that has some dark gray paint, and I make some wavy lines all going in one direction on the round, which I then use one of my pieces of sponge to dab that gray and to feather it out so it's not so solid. I continue making lines with both the dark and light gray, always using a sponge afterwards to blend them. And then I use a tiny brush with just a little black to make small lines next to my larger 
gray lines and I also use a sponge to blend those black lines in too. And then to really make the whole look subtle, I use some white paint on a sponge to go over everything and make sure nothing is too dark or too solid. This is how we make a really nice subtle marble effect. Once my paint is dry, I'm using this polycrylic sealer in a clear gloss, which I will link for you below, to cover the whole marble look wood round, including the edges, to really enhance that glossy marble look. And here are my marble and my wood look risers, both featuring some PVC elbows. And you know, I like them. I like them both, but I think the marble may be my favorite. Let me know in the comments which one you like best. So I got some more silicone molds to do more plaster pieces. I'll link some below along with the plaster. I've got a large and small dish, as well as two different taper candle holders. I'm using plastic cups and spoons for mixing, and I add some water to the plaster without measuring because I never learned my lesson. And I realize I don't have enough for the large dish, so I end up filling the small dish first instead. Then I mix some more up and I use that to fill both of the small taper candle holders. And again, I didn't really tap my molds enough to avoid getting bubbles in my plaster, but one of these days I will do this the right way. <sighs> Let me be a cautionary tale for you. Then I mixed up a great big batch of plaster and filled that large dish mold and set everything aside to fully dry. Oh wait, did I say fully dry? Yeah, no, I didn't wait long enough. I only waited a few hours and although the plaster was mostly hard, it was not dry and full disclosure, nothing worked right after that fact. I'm just being real with you. I kept going, but nothing dried the way that it was supposed to after that. So I gave everything a base coat of white chalk paint anyway, and that base coat didn't actually dry fully either because the plaster wasn't fully dry. What a mess. So I decided to freehand an abstract wavy kind of landscape on the large dish. I will link all the colors I used for you below, but I started with this really dark gray that I made by mixing black with a little bit of white. Next, I'm using a medium gray. And again, this was all freehand. I just kind of made up all of it as I went along. Next, I added a wavy line of light gray to the mix. And then things go from bad to worse when I picked out this cafe latte color. And once it was down there, I was just stuck. I had to keep going. Next, I tried some of this dark brown raw umber color on the other side of the cafe latte. Then I threw a little warm buff into the mix. I mean, like my mother used to say, I'm already dirty. And we cap this monstrosity off with some antique white because why not? And I was so unhappy with the large dish. I figured why not make a set? So I did the small dish similarly. I decided to make the candle holders just solid neutral colors using a beige and a terracotta rose color. I figured that was the least harmful thing that I could do to them. And these are my neutral plaster pieces. You don't even have to say it. And to add insult to injury, the paint still isn't fully dry and either is the plaster. These are just not a keeper. But as usual, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these Dollar Tree magic from Simple to Spectacular DIYs was your favorite, or in the case of the plaster, not so favorite. Regardless, you know I love hearing from all of you. And hey, thanks for watching. And if you love transforming your space with creative and affordable DIY projects, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on our crafting adventures. Together, we're making the world a more beautiful place, one DIY at a time.